Hey guys, join me today as we make a trip to South America. I like to think that we can take a mini trip to South America through these wines that we're drinking today. One of the things that I love about wine is it lets you discover the different countries, the different regions that produce these wines. And you get a glimpse of the geography, the climate, the topography of the region where these grapes were grown. These bottles of wine, no matter what the price point, is really a fruit of labor just from planting grapes and setting up your vineyard and it takes years and years. So for me, there is a romance behind the wines. And you know, aside from getting drunk, at least we get this little mini trip as well. So just a little history, the grapes in South America have actually been planted there by Spanish missionaries hundreds of years ago. I'm always envious of countries that have a thriving wine industry and I guess I just wonder why the Spanish friars never really planted grapes and made wine in the Philippines as they did in these South American countries. Maybe it's a temperature, maybe Padre Damaso was just a little lazy, but since we don't have that, the next best thing is just to be tasting wines that we could get our hands on. These are again going to be affordable wines. These are all under 500 pesos. So let's get started with our wine today. Our first coming from Chile. And the interesting thing about Chile is on its west coast, it's bounded by the Pacific Ocean, miles and miles of the beach of the coastal region. And on its eastern borders, it's actually bounded by the Andes Mountains, or the highest mountain ranges in North and South America. And from a very beachy type of environment, to a very mountainous coast means that everything in between has rich fertile soil. That's what's really helped Chile push their local wine industry. So again, for the first wine, a Sauvignon Blanc from Chateau Los Boldos. It's from the Cachapual region in the Central Valley. And it's actually written here, the location is actually Cachapual Andes. These are pretty much grown at the foothills of the Andes mountain ranges. And let's give this Sauvignon Blanc a try. So as expected with a Sauvignon Blanc, very acidic, very fruit forward. There's a lot of pear, passion fruit, piña. So I like this wine. It has a very tart taste from start to finish. I feel like it has good alcohol content. You feel the burn. Some people don't like that, but I do. And it has a very strong finish. Even after you're done, it's very refreshing, very crisp with that sharp tangy aftertaste. Very good, guys can complement the saltiness of shellfish. I'm gonna pour myself under the glass, guys. I'm gonna be drinking this. When I finish this video, this Sauvignon Blanc is at 410 pesos from Santi's Delicatessen. So for our next wine, we hop on over the Andes Mountains and we cross over into Argentina. Chile and Argentina share the Andes Mountains. The part of the Andes Mountains in Argentina are actually colder, more harsh conditions. So this is a Malbec. Uh, branded as Kalia, also at the foothills of the Andes Mountains on the other side. The thing with Malbec is it's the number one grape variety that's grown in Argentina. Argentina and Malbec are almost synonymous with one another. Even if Argentina and Malbec seem to be made from each other from the start, Malbec still comes from Europe. It's actually a grape that comes from France. It's still grown in France, but it is not as widely grown. For some reason, this grape variety of Malbec, it's found its sweet spot in Argentina and in the last 30 years, really made Malbec into a powerhouse of a grape. It can be categorized as a medium-bodied wine. Some categorize it as a full-bodied wine. It comes down to the year, the grow, the producer. Let's see what this one is. This Malbec is very fragrant. It's actually hard for me to distinguish the aromas on this one. I feel like it has hints of rosemary. I can sort of imagine forest greens. Very woody, getting lost in the forest type of scent. Medium tannins. What I immediately noticed would be its uh, menthol-like feature. I mean, others you feel that menthol as it finishes, but this one, it's still in your mouth. I actually like it. And usually that menthol would come from wines that are drier. It's more on the medium body. It's very friendly, very drinkable. I think there's something in this for everyone. It's not exactly bitter, but it's not also exactly sweet. Yeah, there's an M there. I think it's like a happy medium type of wine. On pairing, they say that when in doubt, look for something that also come from the same region. We're fortunate to have here the Argentinian beef being sold by Bolzi 
Eco Beef. You can get it at rarefood.com or Chingolo Deli in Pasong Tomo. So Argentina is known for their asado culture. Not the Chinese Filipino asado that we know, but they're into grilling big meats and it comes from them. That's what they do. Maybe that's what we should do. So this wine is from SNR. It's at 364 pesos. You can be a non-member and buy from SNR by ordering from Metro Mart. Click on the link below so that you can get 200 pesos off. So for our third wine, we make the trek back into Chile, crossing the snowy Andes mountains, going to the Colchagua region. The Colchagua region is actually nearer to the coast, so this would be in a warmer environment where different grapes are thriving. Guys, if you notice, the wine is already here. This is the third time that I'm shooting for this wine. Um, I encountered some technical difficulty, so bear with me. <laughs> in terms of its aromatics, it's definitely not bashful. It gives off a strong scent of pepper, not even black pepper, but green bell pepper. That's how it smells like. Let's see if it tastes that way. Definitely tastes just like how it smells. Quite surprised with this Cabernet Sauvignon though because it's not as aggressive as the Cabernet Sauvignons that I'm used to. This one is a bit gentle. It's not what I was expecting, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Hints of vanilla and oak also, but not overly aggressive. Right? Quite a balanced Cabernet Sauvignon. As per food pairing, I think, you know what, I can't think of anything specifically. Uh, for some reason right now, I'm thinking of Korean beef stew. <laughs> It's a bit versatile, but you can try this with a lot of things. You can try pork chops with this. Go for this Cabernet from Chile, Branded Route 1. I can only say that it's between 430 to 496 pesos. I'm so sorry guys that I don't have the exact price. I lost the receipt. And I'm giving this a rating of 7.7. .7 for the Kalia Malbec, a flat 8. And this Sauvignon Blanc from Chateau Los Bolos in Chile, I would give an 8.3. That's about it, guys. I hope you like this mini trip to South America, if you can call it that. Actually, this is just me introducing these wines. What I actually like to do, if I have the time, put on some YouTube and, you know, if it's like a Malbec, like watch some videos on Argentina or even the wine producing region itself so that you can have a better understanding where the wine is from. If not it specifically, then just the wine region. Put on some wine and get on some YouTube and just enjoy yourself. Not that way though, but yeah. So thanks again for watching guys. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time.